<laughs> All right, welcome my fellow platists. Now I'm guessing if you've taken the chance on clicking on this video, then you're potentially a chef, cook, or a content creator who's looking to take the visual side of their food way more seriously. Now, in my opinion, one of the best ways to do this is to get online and look at what the visual pros do. So no mucking around, let's jump straight into this video. So here is a dish by a chef called Adam Handling, who's a Michelin-starred chef. He's got a number of restaurants here in the UK, including Frog by Adam Handling, which is based in Covent Garden. Beautiful restaurant. Unfortunately, I've never eaten there, but I've certainly seen enough of his stuff online to see what beautiful food he creates. And then he's got a few pubs, and he actually owns an art gallery as well. So that's why I'm guessing the visual side of food is really important to Adam. So the dish we have here is one of his best known. It's Balmoral Chicken. Now I'm just gonna go through what this is. So it's a brined whole chicken with haggis and black truffle mousse roasted and finished on the barbecue with black emulsions, roasted artichokes and a sauce made of pickled black mustard seeds and it's finished with chicken sausage and crispy chicken skin. Crispy chicken skin is literally one of my favourite things. So excited about this dish. Now for me, when I'm looking at any dish, one of the first places I start is with colour. And in this dish, it's actually muted colours. We've got some analogous colours here. So you've got a mixture of the oranges, the greens and the whites. Oranges on here. Uh, more white colours here and the green of the uh, artichoke. Got some contrasty colours here as well, so you've got the blacks here of the sauce. All of which makes for a very nice combination, but it's not the main star of the dish. For me, one of the star elements of this dish is actually the texture. We've got some brilliant circles. I'm assuming this is maybe the, the, the chicken skin, something along those lines. You've also got a lot of it. Repetition adds more visual weight to a dish. So having lots of them on there not only elevates it from just a boring piece of chicken, it adds much more visual weight to it as well. Uh, then we have the uh, lines here on the artichoke. You also have the curl here and you have the crumb on top of this. All of which adds loads of texture and loads of visual interest to this. The muted tones continue actually into the garnishing as well. The garnishing here, here and here. Usually a lot of garnishes add a lot of contrast and a lot of pop to a dish, but here he's used the same muted tones as well. So it hasn't taken away from the colour palette whatsoever. Another very strong element of this dish is the positioning. Uh, the distance between all of the main elements on the dish are really, really good. Um, there's not too much of a gap here, so it seems like one coherent entity. I think the other element of positioning which worked very well, again with the garnish, is that you almost have like a triangle shape in between all the garnishes, and then you've got some lovely straight lines. The other thing that really struck me about this dish, and now this could be me reading way too much into it, but it's almost got a sort of a surrealist uh, approach to it. Now Adam's clearly an art fan, I'm not sure whether that actually is something that he does intentionally or it's just something that I see, but it's almost like Dali-esque almost. And I think one of the last elements I probably need to touch on is just the plate. Again, it's a fairly blank canvas, but again there's nothing wrong with that, especially when you're talking about such precise dishes. Having a plate that's too distracting or certainly too rustic would just remove itself from the theme of the dish. But here we've got some obviously some nice um, texture around the side, adding to the texture that is already in the dish. And I think it mirrors very nicely these curves here. Again, mirrors the curves that we have on the dish on this side and the curves that we have here and here and the circle here. So we have a lovely mix of shapes in this dish. So what do you think of this dish? What are the most important elements Adam's put on there? Now, if you're not entirely sure what I'm asking, then you need to watch my video here, which is all about hierarchy and plate design. Hierarchy and plate design is really important when it comes to designing a plate and trying to tell the story. For me, the most powerful visual aspect on this dish is here. The chicken with the, with, the, with the circles on top. It immediately draws my eye to it, so therefore it must be the most important element on the dish. Anyway, let's move on to the next dish now, which I found recently on the internet, which is very, very different to uh, this dish that we've just gone through with Adam, as it's clearly really, really different in colour, which I think is very striking when you look at the two of them next to each other. Uh, this dish is actually by a guy called Lucas Agnol, who is the head pastry chef at Longueville Manor on the island of Jersey. If you don't know where Jersey is, in between sort of the UK and France, little island. And again, talking about the muted colours and tone that Adam chose to use, this one is almost a 180 the other way. There's colour everywhere, which can be a really difficult thing to pull off, I think. You've got an orange plate, you've got the orange quenelle, and then you've got the dark chocolate. So we're talking more monochromatic, we're not talking more uh, analogous again, but at a much darker, richer end of the spectrum. The oranges and browns are really warming as well, which I think makes it incredibly inviting. Just to give you a little bit of a background onto what this dish is, unfortunately the Instagram post didn't say a lot, so all I could really find out is it's a uh, chocolate cheesecake with blood orange. I'm assuming this clearly is the cheesecake and then the uh, blood orange maybe is in the quenelle over here, possibly an ice cream or a sorbet, something along those lines. But again, in these videos, I'm not really too concerned with what the uh, food is, it's more about what it looks like. So for me, this plate really is about the colours. It's so powerful and it makes it very dramatic. Uh, especially when you include the little pops of green that we've got here. Unlike with Adams, which were more muted, these really are contrasty, which makes it super powerful and much more dramatic. Lucas has got his proportions absolutely spot on in this as well. 
The size of the plate to the size of the quenelle and to the size of the cheesecake all works in a very nice proportion which makes it incredibly pleasing to the eye. The mix of shapes is also really good as well. You've got clearly the oval of the quenelle and then the circle of the cheesecake. What I really like are these little, I don't know, they're like crisps, almost like they almost look like Pringles on it to me, um, which are um, added texture, but also added shape and interest for the eye. And this is where the texture is actually really important as well. I'm not sure how well you can see it on the screen, but you might be able to see it if I zoom in here. But you've got some wonderful little bits of texture, possibly, which again, work in nice contrast with the smoothness of the quenelle. And again, although this dish is very different to add handlings, there are some similarities. And again, one of the things I very much like is the repetition, the lines that we've got in the chocolate dessert here. Albeit they're a bit less uniform, a bit less precise, they still add visual weight and interest to a part of the dessert, which are very dense, very dark, but it elevates it wonderfully. So tell me, out of the two dishes I've just gone through today, do you have a favorite? For me, I actually think I prefer this dish, which is strange for me because I'm definitely not normally a dessert person. But for me, the drama, the impact, and the use of color in this dish is really, really strong and striking. And for me, it just makes it a more visually pleasing thing to look at. Again, this is not to say that there was anything wrong with the dish before. It's just to my eye, I love this. I think this is absolutely fantastic and a really powerful piece of plating. But come on, let's have a chat in the comments and you can tell me why you think the other one is better. Do you know what? I'm really enjoying doing these visual breakdowns of plates of food. So if you come across any imagery out there that you'd like me to have a look at, or you know of any chefs that would probably inspire me as well as you or other viewers of this channel, then please let me know in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next time.